Hi friends, today I'm going to be taking you through 12 Christmas designs that you can use on cards. These are really simple and easy and they also look fantastic and they are perfect for beginners. You only need a few supplies for these, just some watercolor paints, brushes, watercolor paper, and some waterproof ink. I've listed all of the exact supplies that I'm using in the description below. And you can see here that we are getting started with a classic string of Christmas lights. You can just draw a looped line over your paper. If you draw little dashes where you want your lights to be, and then move down to where the tip of the light would be, and then draw that teardrop shape, it'll be really easy to recreate this. Then you'll take your paint and we're going to alternate the colors. So you can start off with your lightest color and then we'll work to darker colors. So I'm starting with a yellow here. You can lay down that pigment inside the lines and then wash the pigment off your brush. Come back in with just water and trace around the outside of that light and the water will start to draw out just a little bit of that pigment. So you'll get a really nice glowy effect as if the light is actually on. I'm using a size 4 round brush right here. This is relatively small and it's got a nice fine tip on it so that I can get into these small little spaces. The smaller you draw your shapes, the smaller the brush that you use will need to be. And if you want to make things a little easier on yourself, you can always draw larger lights and you'll be able to get into them a little bit more easily and you can use a slightly larger brush. The 12 designs in this video are separated by chapters so that you can easily look through them and easily return to ones that you want to recreate on your own. We are onto the blues now. And then after we finish filling in the bulbs, we're going to come in and create some splatter just to add a little bit of extra interest. So the way that you'll do that is mix up color on your brush. Make sure you've got a really nice watery mix. And then you'll hold the brush in your painting hand pretty firmly and then tap it with the index finger of your other hand. Next, we are going on to the classic gingerbread. So you'll draw a round shape for the head and then draw kind of thick arms and legs because we'll put some designs in them like you see here. And then we'll add three buttons down the front and a couple of eyes and a smile. And then go into your palette and mix up a medium brown and start painting in your gingerbread. Do try to keep the eyes and the buttons and then the little squiggles defined. So when you do go around those, you want to make sure that the color isn't bleeding into those because we'll put some of them will leave white and then some will fill with color. This will be easiest to do with a small brush. I'm still using the size four round brush right here which has that finer tip, so I can be a little bit more detailed. And don't worry too much if parts of the cookie end up looking a little darker than others. You know, sometimes they come out of the oven a little bit uneven if you're making these homemade. So this card just reflects reality. If you have metallic paints, you could also use those on the buttons here. I remember when I was growing up, my grandmother used to put these little metallic sprinkles on her gingerbreads, and that made them seem like the absolute best, most special thing. So if you've got something like that and want to embellish your gingerbread, by all means, do so. For mine today, I'm going to be keeping it simple, and I'll use the colors from this palette to fill in the buttons. And then we'll do some paint splatters. So the smaller the brush you use for this, the smaller the spatter will be. The larger the brush that you use, the larger the spatter will be. Next, we are going to draw some classic trees. We'll draw a trio here. So you'll draw three triangles, pretty narrow, and do them at alternating heights. And then once you've completed that, go back in and fill it in with random squiggles. So if you do not have a steady hand, this is the perfect drawing for you. I do not always have a steady hand, so sometimes it's nice to have a project like this. And just fill in each of the three trees with that squiggle mark. And then we'll go back in with a couple shades of green. So you're going to start with your lighter green, and then we'll go back in and when it's still wet, you'll drop in some darker green at the very bottom. 
and let it just blend naturally as it dries. And we'll do that again on the third tree. This creates a really nice ombre effect and it is so easy, couldn't be easier. Then you'll trace over the ink lines with some green, maybe extend a little bit of the green into the hillside there. And then I'm just focusing the splatter up along the top part of painting here. Okay, now we're going into a snowflake. After you draw that first line, mark your center point so that you can make an X with the next two lines. Add circles to each of the ends. And then in the center line of each segment, add a V shape. And then go back around and add slightly smaller V shapes above and below that first one that you did. So this is really straightforward and easy. It's just a combination of lines and circles. You'll add circles to each of those V shapes. And then once you do that, we're going to come back in with a nice cool blue and fill in each of those circles and trace over those lines. Cards like this are a really nice gift to someone because you can write a personalized note on the back of each of these and they're shaped in such a way that the person that you give them to can keep them. They can display them, they could even frame them if they want to, and they live on. So it's a really beautiful way to share something personalized with someone you love. We're going to finish painting along the inked lines here, and then add a little bit of splatter. I'm using a darker blue than how I painted the snowflake. And then we will go into our next painting, which is going to be of a classic star. This will be really easy to draw if you draw four dots and then out from each of those dots, you'll draw a single point and then connect all of those. And then draw some triangles in the four corners. This will make it look like it's shining out and then add some dashes to complete the star. And then you'll add some yellow. You've probably got a really classic star yellow in your palette, so you can just dip right into that pan and use that. And then you'll paint over the dashes as well. When we do the spatter on this one, I'm going to use some of this washi tape to cover up the star so that I don't get any color mixed into the yellow. And I'm just going to do some blue spatter here. So if you do this as well, it'll make it look as if your star is in a night sky. So I'm not using any other color for the spatter here, just the dark deep blue. And then peel that tape off and we'll go into our next design, which is going to be a poinsettia, the classic poinsettia. So you'll draw some center circles and then draw basically a teardrop shape. It's a little more tapered at each tip. You'll draw two layers of petals and then you'll add some leaves. So I'm just adding three leaves in the background. Let's keep it simple. And then you'll mix up some green and get it to be the shade that you want. And then go back in. I'm using a classic kind of a bluish green here. Paint those leaves and you might want to use a hair dryer or just let it air dry in between these colors because you don't want the green and the red to mix together. So once those layers are dry, come back in with your red and use a really nice classic true red here and paint all of those petals. The ink that I'm using in this video is from a Micron 03 pen. The Micron pens have ink that is waterproof once it dries, so they are perfect for using with watercolor. I use them constantly and you will see them in a lot of my videos. When you finish with the red on this one, if you want to preserve that and keep it nice and crisp, just place a circle of tape over your poinsettia and then you can create the paint spatter around that and your flower will be perfectly intact. Once you're done, just peel that off and we'll go into our next design, which is going to be a classic Christmas bell. So you'll draw an upside down U shape and then have it flare out a little bit at the bottom and draw a couple of accent lines. And then you'll add a bow and some little holly berries to the top. Add a couple of little holly berry leaves and then also a couple of little pine sprigs. Those are really easy. They're just two lines and then you'll create little V shapes for the pine needles. 
Now go ahead and wet your paper first just over the bell and then take a golden yellow shade and start from the left side and then have it blend over to the right. So it's going to be more heavily pigmented on the left side, meaning you'll just pick up more of the color on your brush and put it on that left side of the bell and then rinse your brush and come back in with more water as you work your way over to the right side and you'll get that really nice shaded effect. Then you'll go back in to your greenery, your holly leaves and your pine needles. Those can be a really nice deep rich green. And then we'll do the holly berries and the bow in red so that you get a really classic look between the red, the green and the gold. And if you want to add a little bit of shading to this after you lay down the initial coat of red on your bow, come back in with a darker shade and just put that on the edges of the bow. Just gives it a little bit more dimension. And if you want to preserve that beautiful golden bell that you created, just be sure to tape over that before we put on our finishing touches. Make sure that you've got a really nice watery mix so that your colors will fly right off of that brush and onto your painting. And then once you've got it looking the way that you want, just peel off that tape. And then we will go into our next design, which will be candy cane hearts. When you're drawing the heart shape, it'll be like the classic heart shape that you're used to doodling or sketching. Just keep those side lines a little bit more straight than you would on a classic heart. On a classic heart, they're probably a little bit more curved out to the sides. And then you'll add some smaller lines inside each of the candy canes. I'm alternating a mix of three dash lines and then a single line all the way around. Then come back in with your red and the very fine tip of your brush and just outline those. Work your way around. If you break up the line into smaller dashes, it'll be easier to do than trying to do the whole shape in one go. We'll fill this in with the classic red. Later in this video, we'll do more peppermint candies and those will have a mix of red and green. If you're enjoying the video so far, drop a comment and let me know which of these designs is your favorite or if you're planning to try any of these for your own cards this year. Your feedback truly inspires me and I can't wait to see which of these you are drawn to the most. Your very kind, sweet comments on a previous video I did where I showed another 12 Christmas card designs really inspired me to make this video. On a separate note, if you end up with any larger spatters like this, you can kind of disguise that by going around and filling out some of the other spatters. Next, we'll do another easy string of Christmas lights. These will crisscross your entire page. So do that with four lines, and then you'll add some smaller Christmas bulbs all along each of those wires. And then you'll come back in and fill them in with whatever colors you like. I'm going to be starting off with some red. You can always go a little bit darker with the paint than you think you need to because watercolor will be dark at first and then lightens up a lot as it dries. A design like this is also a great way to experiment with the different colors in your palette if you want to see how they look both when they're wet and when they're dry. It can act as a little bit of a swatch card for you. Give that a little spatter and then we will go on to our next card. This is going to be another snowflake. This one will be a little bit more intricate. So now that you've got the practice with the first one, we will expand on it with this one. You'll start off the same way you did with the other one. And then in between each of the lines, do a little triangle out of dots. You'll use that as a guide to start creating these elongated diamond shapes. And this makes the snowflake look complicated, but this is still really pretty easy. You're basically connecting dots all the way around and it comes out looking beautiful. After you've done that, create a V shape near the top of each of the lines. You'll top those off with small circles. And then once you've completed that, we'll go back in with a really brilliant blue. I'm using the lightest blue that I have in my palette here. If you have multiple blues, like I do here, choose your lightest, clearest one. As you're drawing these designs, if you would prefer to start with pencil so that you can erase any marks that you don't want to have, you can absolutely do that. You can also use a ruler or a straight edge 
to create these lines. Do whatever will make it easiest on you. You want this to be an enjoyable, fun process and not stressful. These definitely don't need to be perfect. They can have a more organic look to them. The whole point is that you're hand making these and they are infused with love and you don't need to have everything perfectly in place in order to end up with a really beautiful result. Now we are going to go into another classic Christmas tree. This one is kind of 80s inspired with that squiggle. And with this one, you definitely do not need to be precise. We are basically just running the brush over the tree and you can start off with a lot of pigment in your brush and then let it kind of run out as you get to the bottom of the tree and that'll create a really nice graduated effect. The unveiling is always the best part, so we will peel that tape up and then we will go into another peppermint design. And we're going to start off with a classic lollipop style, put a little bow on it. The smaller you make the bow, the smaller brush you should use to fill it in. And if you make it a little bit larger, you can use a larger brush. And then we'll make these little peppermint candies. These will have a classic pinwheel design at the center of them, and we're going to do a mix of red and green. Anything in peppermint just screams Christmas to me. Let me know your favorite holiday memories, holiday candies, holiday treats in the comments. It's so much fun to hear from people what they really remember, especially from childhood. Those memories always seem to be especially poignant. When you look back and think of the holidays, what really stands out to you from when you were growing up or things that you remember from your house when you were when you were a kid. Now we're going to paint in these little candies. I'm leaving the sides, I'm just outlining the sides so that they have the illusion of being clear. And then I'm alternating the red and the white to get that classic peppermint look. I'm dropping in a little bit more dark green on that green candy. I swear I've seen those. I don't think I'm making those up in my head. If you have seen those green on green candies, let me know in the comments so that I know that I'm not going crazy. All right, we're going to fill in the lollipop and I'm just alternating colors here. And then I'm going to go back in and fill in some of those wider portions just to give it a little more oomph. It's a good idea when you're using colors, different colors really close together like I'm doing here that you let each color dry in between painting because otherwise they do tend to run together a little bit. I'll show you what you can do if that happens to you if you haven't let it dry and how you can fix it. So in this shot, I had some of the green bleed into the red. You can dry off your brush and then hold it over that green part that bled into the red and your brush will soak that back up again and pull it out. And then you can rinse your brush, put some more red on there, and then come back in and fix it. Little mistakes like that are actually a great way to learn how to work with watercolor, and then all of your paintings afterward will benefit from that knowledge. Now we're going to tape off all of these little designs because I want to preserve the white pieces of these so that they look the way it would in life, where you've got the white peppermint showing through. And then once we have done that paint splatter all around, we will peel those off. You can make any final touches that you want. And then you've got another really beautiful painting. I hope you loved this video. Please join me for a future one. My name is Sarah, and I can't wait to see you again soon.